Patricia always liked history, but when she had the opportunity to live in London for a year, she discovered art history by visiting the museums there. Later on, she took that further by receiving a master's degree in art history. I was born in the northwest part of Mexico, the state of Sonora, and I always liked history. I really kind of discovered art when I lived in London uh, when I was 18 and I went to museums because where I was born it's very similar to South Texas. I mean the, at that time back in the 70s, 80s there were no museums, there were no really art institutions where I was uh, uh, growing up. So that's why I really kind of discovered art when I went to live in London. I was lucky enough to live in London for about a year uh, back in 1981. So when I decided to go to college, I studied art history. It was kind of a long time in the making because I got married, my studies got interrupted. Uh, but finally I was able to finish art history and also a minor in business, business administration. Then I went on and did my master's in art history and I'm now um, a PhD candidate. So the studies have always been part of my, of my life. Patricia was able to put San Antonio on the art map when she was approached by the Ramirez family to represent the late artist Chuck Ramirez. Now, uh, when I started, I concentrated on Mexican artists, Latin American artists, because that was where I was coming from. I knew that material. Really kind of um, the genesis of this Texas representation of artists it started with Chuck Ramirez. I started working with him. Um, back in 2000, uh, late 2008, um, and I really got into getting to know his work before his sad passing in 2010. Um, and from there, it just grew. And exactly moving to this public space, is gonna be two years now in September, um, has permitted me, has allowed me to, to start representing more and more local artists that are I'm very happy and they have become now uh, a very strong part of my program and I'm very, very happy about that. What I'm trying to contribute is to, to have in a very professional space, in a very professionally run gallery, I have a wonderful staff. I mean, I couldn't do it without them. We're all art historians. Um, Alana, who's my, my right hand, she has a master's in art history. Uh, Casey, uh, who has started working for us in the last almost year, a year, she's a graduate of Trinity University with a degree in art history. So we are very committed on taking these artists outside of San Antonio, to outside of San Antonio, to fairs, to exhibits. Uh, we do about four fairs a year and we're gonna have a very strong program next year. So my contribution is to take a lot of these artists that are here and they're really well known in the area to take it outside of here and to that way to have a, a, a more dynamic dialogue with out, people outside of San Antonio. She was able to get Chuck Ramirez into an exhibit that was being curated at the Smithsonian eventually leading to the Smithsonian to purchase Chuck Ramirez's famous photograph, Breakfast Tacos. Uh, in 2012, uh, a very important uh, thing happened to, to the gallery and to the memory of Chuck Ramirez, the acquisition of one of his um, seven-day series work, uh, the one specifically ca called Breakfast Tacos. It was um, acquired by the Smithsonian. Uh, it was a, a very good validation of his work, uh, and that's what you know. One of my duties is to legitimize a lot of the artists that are represented by placing them in museum collections as outside of Texas. So this this was a it was a major coup. It happened because several dynamics and because it's you know it's, it, we're all a village and I'm very, I very appreciate uh, the help of the different curators and writers and that have 
take in or bring to the attention of outside of, of San Antonio the artists that I represent. So I started working with Chuck Ramirez uh, back in 2008, 2009. Uh, his passing, it was just a tremendous mark for the San Antonio community and beyond. He was a very, very talented photographer that was able to capture the, a lot of the South Texas uh, aesthetic, but combined with a very international aesthetic. And that's the one of his triumphs on, on his work. Um, it was a very sad situation when he passed away. The family asked me to represent the state and I exclusively, exclusively do that and we're very proud of that fact. Um, we're talking now with a major museum that is going to organize a show of his work in 2017 and that is going to travel. So it's all good news for Chuck's, Chuck Ramirez's legacy. We have a, a by appointment space in New York City that my plans is to expand it. Uh, hopefully this fall or the beginning of next year, I need to have a stronger presence in New York. That way I can start doing more shows of the gallery program in New York City. Why New York is just, um, is still the center of the art market. Uh, it's a very important venue for all artists to be, to be exposed there and that's why I'm doing this. I have been going to New York for many, many years so I know, you know, some people. I, we have a space now that we um, started working from there back in 2000, 2012, 2013. Uh, but my emphasis has been to always uh, um, you know, to, my emphasis has been on the last two years to, you know, concentrate here because San Antonio is my base. I needed to, I spent a lot of time and resources uh, to, to have this space properly done. So now that it's, this space is very well run, we have the oil on the engine kind of speak, doing a good job. Uh, I can start having a bigger uh, presence in New York so we can, the two places can fit each other. As a serious gallery director, Patricia has some advice for people who want to start collecting I art. think the best guidance for new collectors is, is to start going out, start going to museums, get a membership, even you know, on the lowest level to all the institutions, and just go and go to talks and go to galleries and just expose yourself and try to find what works calls you. I think that's a very important thing. A lot of people say, well, I want to buy for investment purposes. That, you know, sometimes it, it never, is, is very hard to, to do that. I mean, you can do it, but you have to have really very high <laughs> resources. Um, but I think the most important thing, because you're gonna, these are works that you're gonna live with. Uh, you don't want to buy either something on a catalog, never, please. Uh, you want to be informed. Uh, if you don't have a lot of time going out to galleries and going to museums, you can really start on the web. I mean, the web is such a wonderful resource. You want to find a period that you're interested. Maybe you can start with um, works on paper. I mean, the works on paper and prints, uh, you know, original prints is a wonderful way to start a collection. Uh, the Magne uh, Museum here in San Antonio does an incredible job with the art fair. It's, it's one of the best kept secrets. It's one of the best uh, print fairs between the two coasts. It happens every March and you have this wealth of dealers that come from New York City or they come from California, really from Chicago, etc. So you can really be exposed for three days to all this different material that it can inform you. I think now the, the right word for new collectors is information. 
Uh, there is so much information, so sometimes it's, it can be also mind-boggling. Um, I think once you're a little informed, you can always, you know, ask for help. I think uh, gallery owners, gallery directors are always willing and open to talk more than people think. A lot of people are afraid about just coming and looking around. And, and it's not that. I mean, we are always very welcoming. We try to do uh, always a talk with every show that we do because that's, that's kind of giving back to the community, do more the educational uh, objects of the gallery. That is, is a very important part for us, for example, as art historians to share uh, this knowledge and with the community. So it's, don't be afraid. I mean, this is not like a like a, a intimidating place at all. Uh, it looks intimidating, I, I, I know that. But don't, don't, just be a little brave and just walk around and make. Though there is no a damn question. There you can always ask anything. You can ask for slides, you can ask for, not slides, images, you can ask for um, CVs, essays. I mean, we have it all. I mean, specifically, you know, talking about us. But it's just the same applies to any professional gallery. Really, it does. Many people are intimidated by art openings. Let her describe what happens. Art openings are a very exciting. It's a very exciting evening. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very performative event in a way. Uh, the artist is so happy to see his work uh, hung properly and lighted properly, and we are very happy also to to have the the space with new works and just new energy. Uh, the events are open. They, you don't need an invitation. Uh, they are, you know, we always have a cocktail. It's a cocktail reception in honor of the artists. Uh, you can ask questions to the artists. Uh, don't try to take too much time because it's an event also about sales. So you can ask one or two questions, but it's not the best way. It's like an, if you go to an art fair, don't ever try to steal time from the dealer because it's also, it's, it's that, that time is very precious and it's about, more about sales. The educational part really has to come from the, from the, um, um, from the guest that is coming to the reception before. So do, you, do your homework. Try to, to be informed about what is going to happen at the opening, what, sh what works are being exposed. So maybe that way your question can be more, more informed that way. Um, and I think it's just it's a, great, it's a great way to start coming to galleries because it just breaks the ice. You are with a lot of people at the same time. You're probably going to meet or see a lot of your friends. So it's such a joyous event. We are always super welcoming to anybody that wants to just show up. About the opening, so you encourage dialogue. Oh my goodness, absolutely. That's, that's the best kind of opening. When you have, when you have a dialogue, when, when, you, when can you just connect to somebody new and just start a different conversation? It's, it's just kind of the icing of the cake of an, of an art opening. Uh, that's why I really encourage people to just come to just come to our openings. They're, they're actually got lots of fun as well. Since we, um, you know, to 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 select uh, to start a new relationship with an artist is 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 a um, is a very slow uh, progressing time. I mean, usually. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a big operation, so we cannot just be considering a lot of artists. I mean, there is so much talent, but I, I have kind of concentrated uh, in a small group of artists because that's the way I think I can do a better job for them and for everybody. Uh, a lot of the new artists that have come is because of recommendations of, of artists or people that I trust. Uh, a lot of them, you know, for example, Jesse Amado, I was very informed about his work. I have always liked his work because I'm a, as an art historian, I knew about his work. So when he came back to town, 
I went to visit his studio and I just said, you know, let's do a show together. And that, and that was kind of uh, um, very, uh, without so much preparation because I knew his work, I was informed about his work and I just uh, love working with him. I'm very honored to be working with his, with his, uh, with his work. Uh, we just, uh, the El Museo del Barrio in New York City just selected one of his collages. He's going to be in a major exhibit that it opens on the fall. So we are, we are talking about, uh, there is going to be a, uh, a show next year uh, for artists from the gallery that are going to be working in Mexico City in a gallery there. So there is a lot of good things happening. Um, I love to be working with more artists, but unfortunately, it's, it's very difficult. I'm always open, you know, you cannot just say no, 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 but I, we just have, we take our time. A lot of kind of my, my the concentration of the gallery program is in neoconceptual artists. Um, I, I had been more and more inclined to that. I still have my formal, my kind of formal artists that they like, they're just painters, painters, and there is nothing wrong with that. But kind of the new artists is a lot of them are neoconceptual, and I just I respond to that very well. Especially now that is you know with the opening of a, of a small space in New York City, my vision has to be even more more you know very focused because that's the way things are done for you know, major art fairs, curators, people that, li that like to take a look at galleries, they, they need to see a vision, a very focused vision. So unfortunately, I can't just, just kind of work with anybody. Um, one good way to, to work with us is through artists that are really into printing, like you know, etchings, lithography, serigraphs, that printing is a very strong part of their work. I do have a broader market, or not broader market, broader vision, because we do uh, two or three fairs a year, concentrating only on prints. Uh, we are one of three galleries in Texas that are part of the IFPDA, International Fine Print Dealer Association. Uh, so that you know with that background we you know we are a little bit open and and as long as it's something super original when asked about the san antonio art scene she had many things to say it's a bit you know it's a big dream for me i you know i come from um from you know it's a rancher family in, in mexico in the state of sonora and and i was quite i really relate to all this south texas family because of that and I think my pioneer blood that I have, because my father was one of the pioneers in that area of Mexico, it just helps me, helps me to, to, to be a pioneer in a way, because you know, when I talk to friends in other places, they say, San Antonio, is there a market there? And I say, well, you know, we actually have, <laughs> I, like, I like to tell them, you know, I, the San, Antonio, the San Antonio actually has the first modern art museum in Texas, and that's in McNay, and it's such a jewel of museum. So there is, there are collectors, they're just a little quiet, and there is, now with, uh, if you think about it, with all this art education, you know, Trinity has this wonderful art history major that is very important, UTSA with the MFA in art history, and MFA in, uh, you know, studio art, it's just uh, has created a wealth of knowledge and, and a wealth of new people that understand or want to understand about art. And I think it's a, I, I really love how to be, how I am in a way, um, in a small, modest way, a pioneer in that sense in South Texas. Why not?